Hello everybody and welcome to part 29 of Kerbal Space Program. The journey continues. We start in space with our space station, the Socrates, in orbit around Kerbin. Once again, our orbital science lab is full of science, so we need to get that transmitting back down to Kerbin and uh, we need to refill the science lab with some of the experiments we've got kicking around. Some of the stuff we've brought back from uh, Minmus and Moho and the like, and we've, uh, we've got enough to keep us going for quite a while now. Uh, now, today's episode is going to be a little bit shorter than usual. Uh, my apologies for that. It's because, um, well, we'll come on to that a little bit later. Also, yes, the 29th episode of this series, uh, the uh, the precursor series to this, uh, The Journey Begins, uh, that was 29 episodes long in total. We're not quite there yet with this series, but uh, we're nearly ready to launch our final mission, so we're uh, we're not too far away. Come to think of it, the science we've just sent back to Kerbin probably won't be used this series, uh, although future me will certainly be glad of it uh, if we do a follow-on series to this, and we will probably do a follow-on series to this. Anyway, we'll, uh, we'll leave further speculation on things to come to one side for the moment, because uh, we have more present issues to attend to. So we return to Kerbin, and uh, what was it I was saying? Um, oh yes. Today's episode will be a little shorter than usual because of this sodding thing. This then, finally, is our EVE mission vehicle, our landing and return to orbit craft, and oh my god, this has just been such a pain in the ass to develop. I don't know how long this has taken me, how many hours this has taken me to get this working. Um, it's, uh, I think it's something like six cumulative hours of stream time and uh, quite a lot away from camera. It's easily into double figures, but... Uh, Hey, at least we have the finished article now. So the problem that presently presents itself is getting this thing up into orbit and then to its mothership, to our new interplanetary craft. And uh, for a craft of this size and this much Delta V, that would normally be child's play, but uh, I have a feeling with this one, it's not going to be quite so easy. This craft is about 105 tons on the runway and it's designed to be staged four times on the way down to EVE and then back up again. But we've got to keep absolutely everything with us as we head up because we need it for uh, for when we arrive at EVE. And uh, one of the biggest problems is those nuclear turbojets. Of course, they're going to be brilliant for taking us higher into the atmosphere on EVE before we kick in with our rocket engines. And they're performing much the same job here, though to a lesser extent. But we can't just stage those off. We need to keep them. And they are a pretty serious off-center mass, which is going to really screw with our thrust vectoring. All of that aside, though, you'll notice that this thing has undergone some pretty radical design changes since last time. Um, for starters, we've ditched those Lanta engines. We're just going for standard chemical rockets. Those are vector engines. Um, I was trying to go for something between a, a nuclear engine and a standard chemical rocket in terms of both efficiency and thrust, and the, uh, the Lanta engines in afterburning mode seemed to be the answer to that, but no, in the end they just couldn't quite cut it. Circularizing our orbit with this thing is uh, pretty tricky with the off-center mass and the thrust vectoring. Uh, we pass our apoapsis still needing a lot more speed to attain orbit. Uh, so we have to lift our nose up, which means we're burning suboptimally. Eventually, we do run out of our main engine fuel, so I have to fire up those uh, those four deorbiting thrusters I've got to, uh, to take us down into Eve's atmosphere. Um, after a bit of a struggle, I managed to get uh, our apoapsis at uh, 80 kilometers and our periapsis at 69 kilometers, which is good enough. We can just go once through the atmosphere at that altitude. That won't be a major problem. And then we can uh, just circularize that apoapsis. So, uh, well, we're in orbit, but with no fuel, which is kind of embarrassing. So uh, we're going to have to go and fix that straight away. So with their comrades Tommel and Dotty stuck in orbit and going nowhere, our crew of Corkin, Gwenby and Barbus leaps into action to see what they can do to salvage the situation. They have blasted off in one of our Brunel Mark II rockets and they are going to fly up and refuel our ailing craft. Now this is kind of a mission I've done a countless times before. Normally we're flying up to 250 kilometers, 500 kilometers, a thousand kilometers in altitude, but this time we're barely going to be leaving the atmosphere. As with those previous missions, we are carrying up a 36 ton fuel tank. Uh, normally it's full of liquid fuel to refuel our interplanetary craft, but no, this time it's fuel oxidizer mix, uh, as suits our EVE landing vehicle. Now this might be overkill, uh, normally this would be more delta V, far, far, far more delta V than we would need to get something from low Kerbin orbit to, uh, to dock with where our interplanetary vehicle currently is, but uh, 
After the hassle of getting that thing into orbit, I'm, I'm taking no chances whatsoever. First of all, we need to get this craft into a low orbit. The, uh, the EVE lander is at about 80 kilometers, and we're a little behind that, so we're going to have to go lower than that. I, uh, we get ourselves into a nice circular orbit at about 75 kilometers, which we'll have to do. Uh, we, uh, we travel around the planet, we perform a plane correction to, uh, to align our orbits, and then it's just kind of a case of waiting. With our orbits aligned and only five kilometers apart, I'm not going to bother with the rendezvous manoeuvre. I'm just going to just going to wait a few orbits until we're at our closest to our Eve lander, and then I'm just going to kill our relative velocity and burn towards it. If I was being particularly anal about our fuel usage, I might have done this differently, but it's not going to make any real difference to this mission. We've lost daylight by the time we reach our stricken craft, but uh, we're going to press on immediately regardless and get ourselves docked. And uh, once we've securely attached ourselves, we can get on with the business of transferring that fuel across. The first thing I'm going to do is partially fill those two external dorsal tanks uh, and then forbid that fuel from use. And I'm hoping that will balance out the two nuclear turbojets on the underside and make our manoeuvring a hell of a lot easier. With that done, we can crack on with the rest of the tanks. We've got more than enough fuel to fill up the uh, the Eve vehicle's main tanks, and uh, once we've done that, we start to fill up uh, fill up some of the rest of the tanks. We're trying to keep things as evenly distributed as we can with the rest of the fuel. Our Brunel CSM is only going to need a tiny amount of fuel to get back to Kerbin, so we throw most of the rest of that in as well. Uh, we even get round to uh, refilling the tanks on those deorbiting thrusters, and with that. Uh, with that done, it is time for our Kerbals to depart and head back down to Kerbin. We're not going to bother aiming for the KSC on the way back. Uh, initially, I go straight for re-entry and then have a change of heart because uh, that would see us coming down on the night side of Kerbin. And I thought, well, let's at least try and get a bit of daylight on the situation. So uh, our Kerbals travel around the planet, deorbit, make their way into the atmosphere and uh, touch down softly on a brightly lit patch of Kerbin's highlands. Meanwhile, in space, our crew of Tommel and Dotty are sitting comfortably aboard their newly refuelled craft. Um, I haven't chosen these Kerbals at random, by the way, or just as part of my regular rotation. No, these are two of the four strong crew that will be going to EVE. So once they get up to our new interplanetary vehicle, they will be staying there for the foreseeable future. First of all, though, we need to get this craft to the aforementioned mothership, so our Kerbals start plotting their uh, manoeuvres. We don't have time to make a plane correction, we'll just have to do without it at this point, and we, uh, we line ourselves up for the burn, hoping that my attempts to balance this craft out have, uh, have worked. Well, I mean, it could have been worse. Yeah, unfortunately, that's just what manoeuvring with this craft is going to be like at the moment. We just have to proceed from here, just making sure not to use full throttle, just making our manoeuvres as gentle as we possibly can from here on in. It doesn't affect us too negatively, though. We, uh, we close the distance with our interplanetary craft to a little over a kilometre before we turn and start to close the distance some more, ready to bring ourselves into dock. Docking is also a bit of an issue. Uh, we've got very little monopropellant on this craft, just to keep it as light as is possible. Uh, normally I stick gallons of the stuff onto my vehicle, so that, uh, so that we've got plenty to spare and I can really throw it about the place, but uh, no, no such luxury with this one. We get ourselves docked successfully enough, though. Uh, I try to get this lander lined up such that uh, its in-balance is in line with the axis of the interplanetary craft's engine array if that makes any sense whatsoever. Long story short, I've set it up so that if it does start to pull to one side, I should be able to correct it by, uh, by just thrust limiting one of the interplanetary craft's engines slightly. Anyway, with those two craft docked, we have, uh, we have finally finished assembling all of the hardware for our EVE mission, and just look at the thing. When I started assembling this ship, I remember saying, uh, I've outdone myself with this one, and not necessarily in a good way, and yeah, I think <laughs> I think that just about sums it up. But uh, we're not quite done here. We've got, to, we've got one more thing to take care of before we're finished today. So we're just going to raise the orbit of this craft up into its final parking orbit, uh, which will also serve as a, uh, a test run for this entire assembly here. Normally with my interplanetary missions, uh, this is the point where I bring up the crew, but, um, well, we've only got two crew members to bring up. We can consolidate that with one of the refueling missions after I've raised the orbit, bring them up on a Brunel CSM. So, uh, yeah, it just made sense to do this one first. 
I have gone and checked out the uh, Delta V levels with uh, with everything put together, and uh, even though the landing craft isn't fully fueled, uh, we should be absolutely fine. In fact, this bodes very well should we want to actually use this craft to uh, to take some stuff to Jewel, take quite a lot of stuff to Jewel, and maybe even beyond. We're going for a parking orbit of a thousand kilometers again, because uh, I'm not sure how long the uh, the transfer burn's going to take this craft, so. Uh, Best give it plenty of room for manoeuvre, and before too long we are in the aforementioned orbit, just peacefully circling Kerbin. So that, sadly, will be all for today. Once again, my apologies, this video isn't as long as they normally are. Um, just developing that lander took so long, just ate away so much of my time, I just really couldn't have made a longer video. I mean, this one's probably going to be late out as it is. If you have nevertheless enjoyed this episode, uh, please consider liking, subscribing, uh, maybe even following me on Twitter, link in the description if you haven't already. Next episode, well, we've still got a little bit that needs doing to this craft with crew and fuel, but uh, hopefully we'll be seeing this mission underway. But uh, until then, thanks for watching, take care, and I'll see you next time.